Hey there everybody, thanks for tuning in. You're watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host Kyle Brotherson and today we're gonna to be setting sag on this dirt bike. It's very important and I wanna show you how to do it. Stick around. You know, sag is something that is often overlooked but it's important to get the right amount of sag on the rear shock, the suspension of your bike, to make everything run properly so it stays balanced. So sag is going to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be measuring how much static sag we have which is when the bike is under its own weight and then we're gonna also measure what our riding sag is or race sag is when we're on the bike with our helmet and our boots and all of our gear and any backpacks or water that you normally carry. So what we'll do is we're gonna measure and see how far, what the distance is between a point on our fender and the axle down on, on our tire. We're gonna measure that, uh, that distance and then what we do is we take the difference between that and when the bike is sitting under its own weight and when it's sitting with our weight on it, and that's our sag. So a lot of people will, will set sag anywhere from 100 millimeters to maybe 115 millimeters, depending on what, the, on what they want. Some people stand up to set the sag, some people sit down to set the sag. I'm gonna do both. I know of three ways to do this. One is with a measuring tape, and if you're gonna do it with a measuring tape, which is totally fine, you're gonna need probably two helpers. One to, one to help balance the bike, and then one to um, one to take the measurement. You can also get away with this if you put it up against the wall, which I'll show you, and then you don't need quite as many helpers. Another way that you can measure this is with a sag scale. I've got this MSR sag scale here that, that I really like, uh, but since I don't have any, but this would also require me to have a helper. Since I don't have anyone to help me today, I'm gonna use my Slacker digital, digital sag scale uh, because I can do I can do my sag alone without any help with this guy. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is establish a baseline of how what the distance is between the center of our axle up here to a point on our fender. Now on this, a lot of people do do this uh, as straight up and down. Uh, what what Slacker um, says is is the best way to do this is to go from your pivot point here on the swing arm and go from the uh, axle here and then do it in an arc. So you'll see I'm measuring this just by going here's my here's my pivot point on the swing arm, here's uh, my axle, and I'm going to come up here in an arc. And this in somewhere over here is where I want to take my measurement from. They just say it makes it a little bit better to do uh, this the measurement that way. I don't know whether that's the case but I've been starting to do that a little bit more instead of going straight up and down. But now we have our zero point here with, with, the, with the slacker uh, scale. If we were doing this with a measuring tape, we would take a measurement from here to here and we would note that measurement and that way we know when the bike is up on the stand, that's our zero point, okay? And then we're gonna drop it down off the stand and see what our static sag is and then see what our race sag is. In order to see what our race sag is though, I'm gonna need to get dressed up in all of my riding gear. So I'm gonna put my boots on, my riding pants on, uh, chest protector, a backpack, my helmet, everything. I'm gonna be kitted out just like I do when I go on a ride so we know exactly how heavy I am and how much I'm gonna weigh the bike down. So let me go do that. Okay, so now I've got my, I'm fully kitted out my gear. I've also got the remote display here set up on this slacker scale. We are on a zero, we've got everything down to zero, and I'm going to start this camera down here so that we can see. I'm gonna take this off the stand and set it down. Hopefully I've got enough room. Yep, I have to move that stand out just a little bit. And now we can see what our static sag is right here. Hopefully I didn't move that out of the frame. So our static sag on this bike right now, and I'll, push the suspension down and let it up. Our static sag is coming in right at about 40 millimeters. So I'm gonna have to go check the manual to see what we're supposed to have. That seems like a little bit much for this. But what I'll do now, hopefully I've got both cameras running. I'm going to um, get my helmet real quick and see my, what my race sag is. So I'm just setting the bike right over by the wall and then that will give me the ability hopefully you can still hear me that will give me the ability to kind of balance myself off the wall with my hand right here and see what my sag is now what i like to do is i like to give it a bounce again i'm fully dressed out in all my gear i like to give it a bounce let the suspension settle you know i'm up in my i keep bumping i'm up in my attack position and I'm getting 106 millimeters of sag. Hopefully, 
we can see that. And then when I sit down in kind of my natural riding position, I'm getting 112. So I'll bounce, I'll stand up and I'll bounce a couple times and kind of in the attack position, I'm getting 106, sit down, I'm getting 110. Now that's pretty much what I want. I want to get this bike set up where I've got about 110 millimeters when I'm sitting and 105 when I'm standing. So I may not have to do anything on this bike. I may not have to adjust that really at all. But you can see how with this sag scale, I'm able to do this, you know, by myself. 105, 106, sit down, I'm at 110. And you'll notice as I lean back, the sag goes more and more. So your position on the bike really affects this. Look, if I lean forward, I'm at 105. If I lean back, I'm at 114. So your position on the seat is very, very critical in measuring your sag. You wanna get in a neutral position, a neutral riding position, and this is kind of what I'm in, and I'm at 110, 111. I stand up, bounce the suspension a little bit, let it settle, get into my attack position. I'm at 105, 106. And that's, that's pretty much what I want. So the good news is with uh, the way that I've got this whole thing set up, I'm not gonna have to change anything on this bike. I'll set this back on the stand. Like so. There we go. So again, I don't think I have to change anything on this bike. Let me show you what, you're, what you do when you do have to change something. I'm going to spin the bike around so you can see that. So as you guys see, I got pretty lucky on that one and I didn't have to, I, I'm, I don't have to change anything on this bike. Some of the bikes I've run with a little bit less sag um, and, and so I've had to adjust them a little bit. This one I wanted to run with a little bit more sag. And same principles apply to this, whether you're running a PDS style shock or a linkage style shock underneath. I've got a linkage bike outside that I'm going to do next after this. The way that you do this on a KTM, you've got, you've got a collar here that is, there's a, there's a locking collar here that you take and loosen with like a four millimeter Allen key. You get that so it's spinning nice and freely. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna twist this red nut here. Now these are plastic um, nuts here on the KTM. So they make a tool that you can get in there and twist that with. I've got them over here in, in the thing. But a lot of times if the threads are clean, you can just kind of turn the shock and turn this, turn this nut. I don't know if I can get, so it's a, a good view, but you can see I can turn that. So now that this thing is loose, that locking nut is loose, I can turn that. So if I need to, let's say I wanted to give myself only 100, and, 100 millimeters of sag when I was standing and maybe 105 millimeters of sag when I was sitting, what I would need to do is put more preload on this spring. So I would, I would tighten this thing down so that it compresses that spring more. So I'm giving more preload on that spring. And what that does is it will force the rear end up, giving me less sag, right? So the sag, if you, need, if you want more sag, then you need to make sure the spring has less preload so you'd loosen that. So you'd, you'd turn it backwards. You can kind of see how I can turn it and make, it, make this nut go up, right? So I want to turn that back to kind of the zero point that it was at because I didn't want to change this at all. But if I need more sag, I'm going to loosen the amount of preload, uh, uh, screwing the spring up the, up the shock. And if I, need, um, if I need less sag, I'm gonna add more preload onto this, onto this spring right here. So that's kind of how that works. And then you just tighten this back up when you've got it. So it ta it'll take you a minute because you'll have to maybe give a turn or two on this and then set everything back up and, and then check your measurement and see how much it changed. And so it might take you 10 minutes to do it. Um, depending on how much. Uh, now, if you're out of the weight range for your bike, like these bikes come uh, set up for people between the 150 to 180 range. And since I'm 170, um, even with all my gear, I'm 170 without any, without any uh, in my birthday suit. And once I get all my gear on my helmet and all that other stuff, I'm still within the spec of, these, of this uh, stock spring. But if you're heavier than that, like if you're 190 or 200 plus, you're gonna need to definitely go to a stiffer spring be able to get the proper amount of sag set up, the proper amount of preload and the proper amount of sag for your bike. 
And conversely, if you weigh 130 pounds or 140 pounds or 120 pounds, you're gonna need a lighter duty spring back here on the back in order to get in the range that you need to be at. Because if you, let's say, let's say that if you weigh 210 pounds, you might be able to put enough preload on this, on this spring to get your race sag, your riding sag okay, but your static sag, there's gonna be hardly anything because you'll put so much pressure on this bike uh, that the bike won't sag down hardly at all under its own weight. And you want to have a, you want to be in the right window there. That's why you need to make sure that you get the proper spring here for your weight. I'm lucky. I don't gen. I generally, well, I've never had to change the springs because I'm kind of in the weight range. Um, but if you're 190 plus, you're probably going to be out of that weight range. And if you're 150 and below, you're going to be out of that. Check with the manufacturer of your bike uh, for the correct spring um, rate. But that gives you the basic idea of how you do this. If you like these videos, please remember to share them with your friends, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you want to support us, I have parts links down in the video description. There's parts links with Rocky Mountain ATV, Motorsport, and Amazon. If you use any of those links, even with all of your Amazon shopping, it really helps me to put food on the table um, and helps me to support my family. So I would appreciate it if you would use those links whenever, ever possible. Uh, another way you can so support us is by going to Patreon. You can give a monthly tip there, dirtbikechannel.com forward slash Patreon. I mean, patre <laughs> patreon.com forward slash dirtbike channel is what it is. Um, and every once in a while, we also do dirt bike uh, sweepstakes where we give bikes away. We sell some gear and we give bikes away. So stay tuned for that kind of stuff. Um, I hope you guys learned something in these videos. And until next time, we will catch you later.